six power one. I'll lay six power one, I'll lay. I'll lay eight to one the old score there, I'll lay. What price like Raving Beauty? I'll take two to one. I'll take two to one Raving Beauty. There's six arms, I feel down to 38. And two fivers on Raving Beauty down to Jack Holes. Jim. Jim Gay. Jim Gay. Hello? Well, did you get it on? No. Why not? The best price I could get was two to one on. But Walter told me he got even. So he did. So did everyone else. But they've all backed it now, and it's two to one on. What do you want me to do? Put it on, just the same. Eh? Put it on. Oh, all right, if you say so. You know, Raven Beauty, you're far too popular. It's your trouble. Huh. What are you on in this race, Albert? Oh, I was thinking of betting on Raven Beauty. Raven Beauty. She'll not win. You, you see, did you see that drain here? Hmm? You might just as well put your money down that. But she ran all right a week ago. Ah, a week ago. But she's older now. In any case, I've I, I told you, Albert, never trust a black dog. She's not black, she's grey. Grey? Aye. Uh... Oh, they are, you see. She's aged very rapidly. Oh, I don't know what to do, then. I'd have bet anything on Raven Beauty. Who have you been talking to, Albert? No one, but... I had a black pudding for my dinner, and I thought, there's a coin, kid dinky, a black pudding and a black dog running this afternoon. Uh, uh, that's what I said. In any case, I told you, never trust a black dog. Well, the colour doesn't have to be exact. Albert, I told you. Throw your brass away if you want, but I told you, that, that dog, that, that, that dog's only got, only, only got one chance of catching that, eh? What's that? I'll have to put it in the trap with him. <laughs> what do you suggest? Little Mary. But don't listen to me, Albert. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, I am glad I met you. Here, a bob of little Mary. I'll lay eight black tin. I'll lay ten little Mary, I'll lay. What price raving beauty now? Ten to one on. Ten to what? But just now you told me it was two to one on. Well, that was ten minutes ago. So I've got to put on ten bob to win one. That's right. Here's a five. Five pound of ten chilling on raving What's beauty. Down to ticket 38. What's the black tin? Except me, and it's my dog. What about me? Well, you'll get half, I promise you that. I'll never go back on a promise. Ah, but half of what? Ten blinking bob. Nine. Now listen, who trained the dog? I did. Who fed her, giving her the best of everything? I did. And who won the cash? They did. Oh, tomato soup, is that for Dad's tea? No, this is for raving beauty. You'd think the world was run for a benefit. Well, your father likes her to have something nourishing after a race. You really think tomato soup's good for her? Well, of course it is. He says it's what orange juice is to babies. <laughs> You'd think he was married to the dog, not you. Oh, Sally. <laughs> I wouldn't say a word to the women about a winning. You know what they are. Always expecting a big win, something for nothing. They don't understand sport for sport's sake. That's right. So, mum's the word, eh? Ah, mum's the word. Well, Raving Beauty, it's going to be home again, isn't it? Ah, come on, there's a good lass. Come on. There we are. I'll go and see for some soup for you. And don't forget now, mum's the word. Mum's the word. Is the soup ready, Maggie? Yes. That's good. Nothing like a bowl of hot soup after a hard race. How did she do? Oh, not bad. I suppose that means she came in last. Oh, oh no, she didn't. She won. <laughs> well, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Yeah. He's got laryngitis. Is Sally in? Ah, she'll be down in a minute. Did you have a bet? Oh, I. Oh, Jim, and you know I don't like your betting. How much did you win? Five bob. Five bob? But that won't even pay for one week's key. Here, come here, let me do that. There's half a pint of milk in there and a tin of tomato soup. How do you think we're going to afford that on five bob? 
The best thing you can do is sell the beastly dog. Now, Maggie, you know you don't mean that. Oh, yes, I do. Anyone would think you were married to raving beauty, not me. I wonder you don't put her in the feather bed and have me sleep in the kennel. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. A dog would never sleep in a feather bed. Oh. Hello, Peter. Hello. Oh, Sally, I... I can't come out with you. Why? What's the matter? I'm skint. Oh, Peter. Well, Sally, it's like this. Your dad promised me half his winnings if I'd take care of the bets for him. And, well, I was sure that Raving Beauty was going to win and that I'd make a packet, and so I paid back some of the money I owed. Didn't she win? She won. What happened to your winnings? This is all I got. Five bob. You see, everyone else had backed her before I got there, and the starting price was ten to one on. Dogs, that's what's the matter with you. The wife you get will have to have four legs and a tail. Even when we go out for a walk, the dog has to come too. It's with us every night. Oh, Sally, the dog must have a walk. We still do our courting. Courting, you call it? Your mind's on that dog all the time. No, Sally, not all the time. First time we got to talk of anything seriously, you turned your back and said, Oh, look, the dog's after a rabbit. But it was. When it isn't dogs, it's the pigeon loft. You know, I don't like people seeing us coming out of there. I know you're waiting for the pigeons to come home, but everyone else doesn't. Now, Sally, say no more, or you and me's going to fall out. Going to? We have. Where are you going? Out. By yourself? Yes. If you're so fond of raving beauty, you can go and spend the evening with her. Well, what's the matter with you? You look as if you've lost a bob and found a tanner. It's Sally. She's walked out on me. Yeah, take no notice, man. She said some pretty harsh things. <laughs> you wait till you're married, my lad. Couldn't be worse if we were married. Now, listen, Peter. There's only one way to deal with women. You want to start as you mean to go on. Always be the boss. Jim? Yes, love? Your tea's waiting. Yes, love. I'll see you tomorrow. Shut the gate. <laughs> well, uh, well, good evening, Mr. Cullen. Come along, come and sit down over here. Now, come along, everybody. Settle down. Well, it's nice to see so many of our first aid class here this evening. Oh, not so many. Oh, never mind. We'll just be one cozy little family together, won't we? Tonight, tonight, I have a big surprise for you. We are going to be addressed by Dr. Leslie Gowan. <laughs> Dr. Gowan has asked me to make it quite clear that he's not a doctor at all, really. No, he's a student, a medical student. In his last year, I'm given to understand. That means that if he passes out properly, he'll be a doctor, a real doctor. And I'm quite sure that our Mr. Leslie Gowland is just as good at passing out as the next man. <laughs> Tonight, he has come to talk to us about the principles of first aid. So be sure to take plenty of notes. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Leslie Gowland. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> first aid is temporary care given to the victim of an accident until the services of a physician are obtained. And now I want to look at your notebooks, just to make sure that you fully understood what I've been talking about. I, I would like to propose a vote of thanks to Mr. Garland for his pains, and, he, uh, and for the painstaking way in which he has explained to us the principles of first aid, as if we didn't know. As, I mean, as if he were talking to people who didn't know. And now I'd like to give you a few details of our future activities. Mr. Leslie Garland says he will continue his lecture on the principles of first aid at the same time next week. And uh, uh, tomorrow afternoon, we are in the vanity house. And I do hope you'll all be able to come to that because... It's Very promising, the Miss... Uh, the of first aid. Gay. It is a practical work That's gay. in the long run. And then, uh, uh, later in the week, there is the sale of work in this hall. Jim? Yes? Well, what's the matter?
Have you got indigestion or what? No, it's, uh, it's raving beauty. I, I heard a whimpering. Oh, is that all? Is going. Oh, very well. Learning anything? Things I didn't know existed. <laughs> Jim? Coming, love. What's the matter with Dad? He's usually first down. Well, he was up all night with raving. She's poorly. It's all that tomato soup she's been having. Oh, well, don't say anything. He's very upset. Oh, there you are, love. Now, come and sit down and have your breakfast. No, thanks. I don't want anything. Oh, but you'll have to have something before you go out. Oh, no, I'll be all right. It's raving beauty I'm worried about. I say, Maggie, do you think you'll do something for me? What? Well, have you any Epsom salts? Yes, I think so. Why? Well, you see this? Yes. Well, this is an old recipe of my granddad's. It's tonic for dogs suffering with distemper, heart, pad and gravel. Is she really poorly, Dad? Eh? I mean, is it serious? Well, I hope not. But if she isn't any better, I'll have to take her to the vets tonight. Would you like me to take her? Oh, no, no. Well, why not? Well, uh, she might think there was something strange going on if I wasn't with her. Dogs are very sensitive, you know. No, no, better wait until I get back. All right, just as you like. Oh, well, I'll be off now. You won't forget to give her the medicine regularly, will you, Maggie? Of course I won't. I'll get you dinner. Uh, I don't suppose I'll be able to eat that either. There you are. Now, don't you worry. Well, how can I help it? You know, Peter, you'll have to do something about our Sally. She's looking far too happy. But what can I do about it? Well, why don't you buy her an engagement ring? You know, she's always reading these engagement notices in the paper. And times have changed, you know, since we were lads. I saw one the other day, Peter. It was gold, you know, and it had uh, four little pearls on the top. I, I, I wouldn't buy an engagement ring if I'd never get married. <laughs> well, it seems to be that there are others that will. And it's nothing but meanness, Peter. And meanness doesn't go far with the girls. I, I don't like throwing me money about it. Jim, what happened? You buy an engagement ring for 10 or 12 quid, and then six months afterwards, you, you have to buy another one to get married with. It's nothing but a jeweler's racket. <laughs> yeah, well, you'll have to do something. What are you doing about raving beauty? Hey, Peter. Eh? Is your mind working the same way as mine? Uh, are you going to run her at Rodney Park on Saturday? Well, I don't know. We've paid the entrance fee. He's a pity to waste it. It's not much good unless you can get a decent bet on. No, I know. Oh, they're all on to it. She'll finish up like she did last time. Odds on. You know, Jim, all the fellas were busy sifting our chances this morning. Don't I know it. Everybody I meet, it's the same story. Is Raving Beauty going to win on Saturday? How's Raving Beauty keeping? Give me a pen in the neck. Jim. What? Supposing we spread it about that she's not going to run, and then slip her in at the last moment, like? No. No, it wouldn't work. Yeah, we wouldn't even get on the track. Do you know, you and me have been watched like a cat watching a mouse. I'm telling you. Mm. Good grief for the opposition. What's it, Jim? How's Raving Beauty? Is she gonna win on Saturday? What do you want to know for? Blimey, why do you think? Me and the missus are selling the motorbike, putting it on her. Ah, well, she'll never win with a motorbike on her. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. 
Hello, Maggie. Oh. oh, hello, Mrs. James. You made me jump. I was just going shopping. Is there anything I can get for you? Oh, no, thanks very much. I've got to go down myself this afternoon. Oh, well, um, how's your husband? Oh, he's grand, thanks. I bet said he thought he saw him sitting in the run with raving beauty when he got back from the night shift. Is that right? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. He was up half the night with her. You don't mean the dog's poorly? Well, Jim thinks she's got distemper or something. Anyhow, he's taken to the vets tonight if she's no better. No. Hey, thank goodness you told me, Maggie. I was going to put half me housekeeping money on her on Saturday. Oh, well, I wouldn't like you to lose your housekeeping money, but... Uh, don't tell anyone I told you. Jim doesn't like me talking about the dog. You know how it is. You know me. Not a word shall pass me lips. Not a word. I had it from Mrs. Gay herself. The poor beast got whitewashing can't run. What? Wash, there's no such thing. Well, gravel then. Aye, that's what she said. Are you sure? Aye, she said it couldn't run. And Jim Gay's going to the vet with it tonight. No. That's what she said. As a matter of fact, her back legs are paralyzed. She can't walk, let alone run. Oh, dear. Jim Gay's taken her to the vet tonight, but it won't do any good. You mark my words. She's got locomotive taxi. That's what she's got. Yes! They've taken her in a taxi. No. Unless the vet can do something for her, they'll have to shoot her. What oh, shot? Well, oh, that's what the governor said. He had it from Jim Gay himself. I'll walk with you as far as the church hall. Oh, Jim, it's years since you've taken me out. <laughs> Don't be getting soft now. <laughs> hey, oi. Look at the old press association, seeing what we're up to. Of all the cheek. Oh, look at the audience. I wonder if they'd like my autograph. <laughs> Dog looks all right to me. Oh, no. I'd say it was proper poorly from the look of it. Yes, there's something wrong, if you ask me, Spud. Why? That's the first time I've seen Jim and Maggie go out together in five years. I uh, think I'll take a bit of a walk. Look over your shoulder, Maggie, and see if there's anybody following us. Why? Well, I want to know, that's all. Oh, Miss Spud. Ah, just as I thought. Well, walk a bit slower and look a bit sadder. Whatever for? Well, we've got sickness in the house. I don't know which is the worst, you or the dog. Yours won't live long. Oh. Ah, she's not as bad as all that. Uh, I should know. I've had greyhounds for years. Did you do any good with them? No, nothing but trouble. Never made a penny. Oh. You didn't have very good ones then? Oh, I had the very best. And I was four in one week once. They all look better than she does now. Still, I'm used to that. Why? I'm an insurance man. Oh. Paid out a claim this morning. No older than you. Looked a bit like you, too. What's your job? Well, uh, I'm down the pit. Ah, so was he. You see that woman with the parrot? Mm -hmm. Slipping away fast. Tell you what, it's a nice day, isn't it? Yeah, it'll rain before seven. I'll tell you what, that cat of yours doesn't look very well. Yeah, that's where you're wrong. He's too well. I'm having him attended to. That'll take him down a peg or two. Next, please. I say, I'm right glad to have had this cheery conversation with you. You've bucked me up a lot. What I always tell to my girls, try to win, but always be happy to lose. And you'd be surprised how many girls are happy to lose these days. Eight to us. That's right. Oh. 
I hear you've got trouble at home, Mrs. Gay. What? Well, isn't your dog sick? Oh, yes. Is she going to run on Saturday? Oh, I don't know. You'll have to ask my husband. Change tables, please. Lots of drums. Good evening, Maggie. Good evening, Minnie. How's Jim? I notice he's not here as usual. Oh, he's very well, thank you. Give him our love, if it doesn't choke him. Oh, give over, Bert, give over. It's not Maggie's fault if Jim doesn't like his own flesh and blood. That's right. Don't bring me into your family squabbles. Tell us, Maggie, how's the dog? Well, she's not very well, as a matter of fact. What? What is that? Well, Jim thinks she's got a touch of flu. He's taking her to the vets. Yeah, that's bad with the race coming up so soon. Will he be scratching her? Me, I don't know. I bet you don't. Jim didn't tell you to tell us the dog's ill by any chance. So we wouldn't bet on a like. That way he'd get a better price himself, of course. Jim didn't put you up to this, did he? Put me up to what? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, what's the matter with you two? Don't be so suspicious. Maggie wouldn't lend herself to a dirty trick like that. If you don't believe me, you'd better come up and see for yourselves. Jim won't have us in the house, you know that. He'll have you in tonight long enough for you to apologise. I'm not going to be called a liar by anyone in his family. Nobody said that, Maggie. As good as. You can come up and see for yourselves directly after this. Lead. Play that. Oh, hello. Frame. Give me some whiskey and milk, will you? Light the fire. Right. Uh, Hilda, put a match to that fire, will you, love? It's Jim Gay's dog. Looks bad, doesn't she? Jim, will she live? It's hard to tell. Look at that. Oh, it's you. Yes, it's me. Can I come in? I suppose so. So you're giving me my cards, eh? I suppose it's Leslie Gowland, the vicar's son. Yes. He's still at school. Medical school, Peter. Oh, you're just stuck on him. When he becomes a doctor, he'll be leaving here. No, he won't. He wants to set up in practice in this town. And what's he practicing with you? Peter. All right, Sally. I'll marry you. No. Did you hear what I said? I said, I'll marry you. Look, you name the day. Whit Monday, August Bank Holiday Monday. Oh, I'll give you everything. I'll hire a car, we'll have the church hall, and I'll get your photograph in the advertiser. No, it won't work. Now, Peter, if you want to see Dad, he's gone out. Where is he? He's gone to the vet. What's the matter with him? It's not him, it's the dog. The dog? The vet? <laughs> What are you supposed to be suffering from? Shock. I'm not surprised. Well, you must admit they try, Mr. Gowler. My girls always Now, try. the great point about shock is to render the patient comfortable, to remove all sources of anxiety, and to keep them warm. Now then, what's wrong with this one? Broken arms, sir. Both of them? Simple collis fracture of the right arm, compound humerus fracture of the left. I've made the patient quite helpless, sir. Very good, very good. Thank you very much, sir. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, if only I was out of this, someone would be suffering from a severe hemorrhage of the nose. See you later. And now, Miss Braithwaite, just imagine that you have... Jim! Jim! I've been to the vets. What's happened? Quiet, quiet, can't you? Come inside and I'll tell you. Phew. Well, that settles it then. Not one bob of my money goes on her. Not one bob. Hey, Walter. Don't be hasty. Well, he can't carry her in race, can he? Peter, draw those curtains. Now, 
Now then, come sit down here. Jim, what's going on? Well, I'm going to tell you. Now, raving beauty's poorly. I've had her down at the vets, and he's very doubtful about her. She can't walk, so I've had to carry her. Now then, would you back her on Saturday? Oh, no. No, that's... and neither will they. But you and me will. Oh, not if she's poorly. But listen, Peter, she's not poorly. She's perfectly all right. But, Jim, you said that she... Oh, I see. While they were watching, you were... While we... Oh, Jim, you're a genius. Well, I'm very glad somebody realizes it. Now, listen. We've got to get Raving Beauty safely into a room. Then you've got to go out of here, and you've got to look as if you're fit to break your heart. Now, do you understand? Right. Hey, don't let anybody in here till I've got Raving safely out of the way. Okay. Come on, Raving. Oh, good evening, Miss Garland. Hello, Peter. Vicarage newspaper round. Parish magazines. Is Mrs. Gay in? Uh, no. Mr. Gay? Well, well, he's very busy at the moment. Oh, then I'll come in and wait, if you don't mind. Oh. I've got a message for him from my father. If it's another of them nosy parkers, Peter, can come out. Oh, <laughs> good evening, Miss Garland. Hello, Mr. Gay. Well, uh, come on in and sit you down, won't you? Oh, well, I can't stop. I just came to bring Mrs. Gay's parish magazine. Uh, yes, here it is. Oh, <laughs> thank you. That'll be fourpence, please. Oh, there used to be twopence. Even the price of salvation is going up. <laughs> How about one for you, Peter? News of the parish? Yeah, oh, no, thanks, no. Now, if it had been the news of the world, <laughs> I might... <laughs> <laughs> now, Peter, draw the curtains. Are you afraid of somebody seeing in? Now, there we are, miss. Four oh, enough. Thank you. Oh, I've got a message for you from my father. Oh, well, if it's about coming up to church, will you tell him I haven't the time? <laughs> no, it's not about church. He wants your advice. Oh, oh, he does, does he? You keep a greyhound, don't you? I do. And what about it like? Well, Father wondered if you could give him some information. What? Do you mean to tell me that a minister of religion, the vicar of this parish, and he sends you sifting about my dog? Well, now I've heard everything. What's upset you, Mr. Gay? Upset me? I suppose he sent you round here to find out whether he should back it or not. Oh, no, no. He wants some advice about his dog. Oh, oh, see. <laughs> well, that's different now. Come on, uh, sit you down and tell me all about it. <laughs> Well, you see, he's looking after a dog for my uncle. And he doesn't think it's as well as it should be. <laughs> That's why he wants your advice. Of course, if you think he ought to go to a vet, I'll tell him... Oh, no, tell no, him... no. Tell him not to waste his money on vets. And tell him I'll come up to see him tomorrow on my way home from the pit. That'll be about, oh, five o'clock. Oh, thank you. I know he'll be very grateful. Oh, don't mention it. <laughs> well, goodbye, then. <laughs> goodbye. Now, come on, Peter, see the lady out. Where's your manners? Oh, right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, I suppose I couldn't persuade you to give us a hand with the sale of work next Friday. We're terribly short of helpers. Oh, oh Friday? No, no, I'm very busy on Fridays. I, I, I go to night classes, you know. Really? What are you studying? Your b b French, as a matter of fact. Oh, parlez-vous français? Well, n not tonight, if you don't mind. Some of the time. <laughs> Peter. There's only one dog we've got to worry about, and that's this Pride of Erin. Pride of Erin? I've never heard of her. No, no more have I. She doesn't belong round here. So you slip up to Rodney Park, they'll know something about her. And you can get my sea licence at the same time. All oh, right. Oh, and on Saturday, I want you to get up there early, you know, as soon as the track opens. And I want you to put on four lots of five pounds and spread it around. You know, uh, nonchalant-like. All oh, right. Now, nah, Jim. How are you, Jim, lad? How are you keeping? Yes, come in, come in. We only live here. Oh, with a sharp tongue, Jim. Always shouting before you get hurt. We're not going to eat you. Can't you be civil to your relations when they come up to see you? Fighting's a poor way to go on. It gets you nowhere. Not nowadays. Oh, good grief. What did you bring this lot in for? I asked them to come, Jim, because they wouldn't believe me about raving beauty. Uh -huh. I knew the dog had come into it somewhere. Maggie tells us she's not well, Jim. Well, what about it? Oh, we want a civil answer to a civil question. Is Raving Beauty going to win at Rodney Park, or isn't she? And why should I tell you? Oh, we look saps if she wins on Saturday and we haven't backed her. We look bigger saps if we back her and she doesn't Shut win. Shut up. Yes, but not such a sap as I'll be if I'm keeping a dog for their benefit. What did you let them in for, Maggie? I knew what they'd be after. They're your relations, Jim, not mine. Well... Tell them the truth. If the dog's sick, they've a right to know. If it's sick. All right, Peter. Come on. You go outside and bring Raving Beauty in. Let them see for themselves. Eh? Come on, I'll get the key for you. Well, aren't you going to ask us to sit down, Maggie? Oh, yes, she can sit down, I suppose. I should hope so. Right, right. And 
now you'll be able to see for yourselves. For what can't speak, can't lie. Yeah, well, I'm glad you decided to do the right thing, Jim. Go on, take your hat off. Well, and how much money were you thinking of putting on her on Saturday? Fifteen pounds, Jim. You would? Aye, I'll be honest with you, lad. Well, what about you, Bert? I've only got nine pounds, Jim. But I was thinking of selling six Rhode Island Reds tomorrow to pound a time. I'm putting fifteen pounds on, same as my father. I see. And you're not sifting. This is genuine concern for raving beauty. Why, of course, Jim, lad. You're my blood relation, aren't you? Yeah, that's what's worrying me. Now, Jim, it's time we patched up this silly quarrel. This not speaking business has been going on too long. You're a gay, and we're gays. And blood's thicker than water. Well, do you know how many gays there are in this part of the world? There's 40,000. If there's a dozen, they breed like rabbits. Jim. Well, I can't be making up with all the gays in the district. If I do, I'll be walking down the street nodding my head. I'll be dizzy. Now, look here. Now, shut up. Now, what we want, Jim, is a civil answer to a civil question. And I'll see that you get one. And after that, the less I see of you lot, and the better I shall like it. All right, Jim, if that's the way you feel. That's exactly how I feel. You can whistle with that poor dog down there suffering like that. Oh, I, I forgot. Do you think we ought to have her put out of her misery? No, Maggie, I think you're the one that I should have put out of her misery. What? Listen, there's nothing the matter with raving beauty. She's as fit as a fiddle. But I saw myself with my own eyes all bandaged up. I know. And suppose I had you all bandaged up. That wouldn't mean that you were dying, would it? No, well, I it's know. It's the same with raving beauty. There's nothing the matter with her at all. But Minnie, Bill and Bert and all the rest of them think that there is. Now, we shall be able to back her and get a real prize. We'll make a packet. But suppose she doesn't win? Oh, she'll win, all right. There's only one dog I don't know about, and that's uh, Pride of Air, and she doesn't belong round here. I want to talk to you. It's a bit late for that, isn't it? What do you mean, because it's late or because it's too late? Both. I'm sorry, Peter. Oh, but Sally, why? I told you it just won't work. Oh, it would work fine. Just give me the chance. I'll show you. You've had all the chances. You know you have, Peter. Oh, Sally, I haven't. All I've had is... For goodness sake, pack it up, you two, and let us get some sleep. Go on, kiss her goodnight, and for heaven's sake, stop all this lovey-dovey business. Oh, 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 it's all right, Jim. I, I was only... I don't care what you were only doing. Go on, kiss a good night and get it over with. We'll have the milkman here any minute. Good night, Sally. Good night, Peter. I expect Piggy told you it's about my brother's dog. I'm looking after it while he's out east. Oh, I see. The difficulty is I don't know anything about animals. Well, what seems to be the real trouble with her? I'm not sure. All I know is that she's off colour. Doesn't seem to want her food. Just, um, sleeps all the time. Oh, you didn't tell me she was a greyhound. Didn't I? Does that make any difference? Difference? I should think it does. Why, greyhounds are right up my street. Uh, what do you call her? Well, we call her Flossie. But her real name's Pride of Erin. Pride of Erin? But she's running at Rodney Park on Saturday. That's right. I shall have to get my sexton to take her up there. That is, if she's well enough.
<laughs> well, she seems all right to me. A bit short of exercise. Have you had her out lately? Oh, yes. Piggy takes her for a walk every evening. Just round the houses, you know. Walk? Oh, that's no use to a ground. No, she wants two or three miles and a chance to run, not walk. Oh, I don't think I can arrange that. Well, now then, uh, here's a condition powder. See that she gets that tonight. And in the morning, I'll be round with a tonic for her. Oh, and by the way, it's as well to mix it in tomato soup. Tomato soup? Oh, tomato soup's the stuff to make a dog fighting fit. But the main thing is exercise. Now, has your daughter got a bike? Yes. Tell her to get it out and take the dog for a three-mile run morning and night. Dear, she's not going to like that. It'll do them both a world of good. She's a nice little bitch. <laughs> the dog, I mean. <laughs> I say, do you know anything about her record? I'm afraid not. A piggy at nose is important. No, no. Uh, I was just wondering if she'd uh, won any races, that's all. Yes, I remember my brother telling me she won a final in Ireland. Now, what was the name of the place? Shelbourne Park. That's right. Well, thank you very much indeed, Vicar. Now I must be off. Yes, but Mr. Gant, <laughs> keep my regards to Mrs. Oh, Gant. yes, yes, I will. Peter, I've been looking all over the place for you. Why? I found pride of air in. Where? In the Vicar's back garden. Can I get you something? Just a bit of peace and quietness. But, Jim, what's he doing in the vicar's garden? He's looking after it for his brother. Now, we've got to find out about its form. Well, what's it like? Oh, it's a smasher. As good as raving? Well, that's what we've got to find out. Now, it's our turn to do a bit of sifting. Why, but how? With the vicar? No, I've tried him, but he doesn't know anything about it. But he says that Peggy does. Now, that's where you come in. Me? Yes, you've got to make up to her. Find out about the dog's history. Find out all she knows about it. Help her to exercise it when there's nobody watching. You know. Oh, no, I don't. How am I going to do all that? Take a gathering bluebells. Give it a bit of slap and tickle. Oh, I, I don't think I'd like to do that. Oh, you're not supposed to like it. You're doing this as a sense of duty. Supposing she won't let me? Well, then you'll have to be masterful. Eh? Don't you ever read any books? Hmm. Well, for heaven's sake, finish your beer and I'll tell you. and I was, I was wondering how the, how you were. Oh, I'm very well, thank you. It was kind of you to inquire. Oh, I am kind. I'm sure you are. Especially with dumb animals like children and cats and dogs. I love to take them for walks. <laughs> cats, Peter? Oh, no. <laughs> I was just thinking of taking our dog for a walk. Oh, good. I, I, I mean, were you? Where do you keep her? In there. In Say, I was just wondering, wouldn't it be rather nice if we could take the dog and go and pick some bluebells? Oh, yes, very nice. If bluebells hadn't finished months ago. Oh. oh, I would like to come for a walk with you and the dog. I'm sure we'd both like that very much. Oh, here we are. on Saturday, she'll run Rodney in 29 seconds. Oh, that good? No, oh, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Oh. <laughs> Flossie seems to like these walks. Oh, she would. So do I, Peter. Do oh, I? <laughs> oh, there's nothing like a good walk for keeping in trim. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
I tell you, it did. Ah, you might have made a mistake starting her off. Did I ever make a mistake timing Raving Beauty? No. No, but I'd feel a lot happier if I had a pedigree. I'll tell you what, Peter. Why don't you go out with Peggy Gowland tonight and then ask her for it? What, again? No, yeah, again. No, no, Jim, I, I can't. Well, why not? I don't know what to do. I'll tell you what to do. You go to the sale of work tonight, get hold of Peggy Gowland, give her a good smacking kiss and then... Ask her for it. Now, what about a nice piece of delft? This one's belonged to my great-grandmother. We have a lot of bric-a-brac in our family. You wouldn't think so, would you? No. Well, what kind of pot are you looking for? Well, this is what we call a posset pot. It was made by Mr. Niblett, Mr. John Niblett, in 1714. Miss Gowland. It's pretty, isn't it? No? No, something with a handle, you said. And, uh, and mug-shaped. Now, let me see. Aye, that's it. Eh? Oh. Miss Gowland. Oh, no, no, young man, she's over there. We're all antiques on this stall. Oh, there's one, Mrs. Gay. It looks just right for you. Don't, no, don't you think it looks a bit young for me? I don't think so. Pull it down over your eyes a bit. Like this, Shimmy? No, no, like this. There. there. Oh, no, I don't think so. You know, the only one I really like is this one. Excuse me, Maggie. That's mine. Oh. oh. Hello. Oh, hello, Peter. Have you seen Miss Gowland? Yes, she's here. Oh. Hello. Oh, hello, Peter. I'm so glad you were able to come. We need all the help we can get. Uh, yes, but have you got the pedigree for... No, Peter, not on this tour. We've got some beautiful handmade things. Oh, I, I can see that, but it's the pedigree... Well, it's quite easy once you get the hang of it. Here you are. Here's Mrs. James. I'm sure she'll buy something. Mm. Oh. Hello, love. <laughs> How about these? No, thanks. I've had enough of all that. Oh, back to the grime and dirt. Oh, Leslie, what a wonderful run. Over the hills, far away. Lovely. Mm. You know, it's surprising what lovely things you can find around here, if you look for them. Sally, hmm? when are we going to get married? What's the matter? Don't you love me? Oh, Leslie, you know I do. It's just that, well, I don't know what Dad will say. You see, he always wanted me to get married Forget to... Forget it. Let's go and tackle your dad right now. Oi, oi, Sally, you're late. She's been busy. Look, I must go now. I'm late for rehearsal already. You come and listen. Shirley, I wanted a two kick down. I wanted a two kick down. All right, hold it a second, hold it. Joe, we'll try it once up to tempo now, please. Right. Ready? And I wanted a two kick down. Oh, look, hold it, hold it. Look, girls, the music, the music. Will you please keep in tempo with it? I'll show you what I mean. This is how I wanted to do it. Ready? And I wanted a two kick down. I wanted a two kick down. What do you fancy for tonight, Albert? Number four. No, she's not good. She looks all right to me. You don't want a bit of pack dogs. For instance, did I or did I not tell you to put, put your money on Raving Beauty? No, you said back Little Mary. Now, no, think back, Albert. Think back. Did I or, or, or did I not say, go ahead, take, take, take no notice of me, back Raving Beauty? All right, but you see, when, when I got the... Don't embroider it, Albert. Don't embroider it. Did I or did I not say that? Ah, but, but there was a man there. And didn't, oh. didn't, didn't you go ahead and put your money on something else? Aye. Well, it's in old fault, then. All right, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Go and have a rest. Joe, go and have a cup of tea. All right. Uh, will you move the piano further into the wings? Those are the wings. Those are the wings, Albert. Lift the left leg up. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Albert. It's on your foot! Your foot! Thanks. Go and get a block of go, go and get a block of wood. Now hold it there, innit? Come on, Albert. Come on, I can't store it here all day. Oof. 
reckon they must be getting old Harry to play it. Old Harry? Well, he's the only one that I know with a limp. Doesn't look right to me, you know. I always thought it were better to, better to have it straight. Oh, well. Yes, but hurry up. Oh, look, this is no use at all. Well, you, you can't have it any higher. If you, if, you have, if, you, if you have it any higher, you have to play it like a piano of accordion. Well, get those blocks of wood out of the way. Why oh, don't you make up your mind? Here, that's no good. It's supposed to be on end. He wants it played this way. Well, this is all to pot, then. He doesn't know what he wants. Come on, let's go and have a pint of beer. Hey, Joe! Joe! Hi. Come on, girls, come on. Get the line, let's do some work. Oh, wait, wait, for Wait for Shirley again, shall we? Oh, Sally, there you are. You like to do your song now? see your father right now. Hello, Hope. Have you spent Hope? <laughs> oh, Jim, you're not going to start bathing the dog tonight. Oh, well, of course I am. A bath makes her feel fresher. You know, she'll come out of the boxes two yards quicker after a wash the night before. Freshens her up, you know. Like it freshens up you and me. Now, don't start comparing me with the dog. Did you get the three towels ready, Maggie? One towel does us. You'd think one towel would do for the dog. Oh, no, it takes three to dry her properly and then give her a good rub down. Well, we don't want to catch in coat, do we? Hey, that's utility. Well, I suppose I'd better go and speak to your father. Come on, let's go and get it over with now. No, let me go in first. He hates having things sprung on him. Look, you give me a couple of minutes and then come and knock at the door, all right? All right. Jim. What? Sally says she's not going to have Peter. Cha, take no notice. She's always thinking about one of them streamlined gents from the colliery offices. Ah. I wouldn't mind having a pit manager for a son-in-law. Oh, it's no one to do with the pit, Jim. It's the vicar's son. Oh, well, I don't mind having a bishop in the family, either. <laughs> hey, don't you worry, Maggie. She'll have none of them. 
Peter's the nut for her. Yes, and she's the lust for Peter. Mother, Dad, Leslie's outside. Leslie Golan? Yes, we're going to get engaged. You what? He's come to meet you. Oh, Mother, I want you to be all right with him and... Dad, don't start arguing with him, will you? I'll not argue with him so long as he doesn't argue with me. Hey, just a minute. I thought you were keeping company with Peter. Oh, don't say keeping company, Dad. Don't be so pitomatic. All right, Sally, we know how to talk when we want to. He told me he was going to buy an engagement ring tomorrow, so he wants to see you tonight to see if it's all right. <laughs> well, it's not all right. Jim! Couldn't you go out? No. Mother, ask him to go out. I'm not going out. And what are those three towels doing stuck up on the line? Hey, put them back. Put them back. Oh, but you can't. Put them back. Oh, give them to me, do, and I'll put them away till he's gone. Oh, Mum, give me a hand with this, will now you? Now then, Sally, that's enough of that stuff. Oh, my kid, that bath stops where it is. Oh, but he'll think we're savages if he sees this sticking in the middle of the floor. He'll think that's where you get your bath. Oh, she's right, Jim, you know. Some people do think the miners are uncivilised. We'll just put it in here. I don't think I'm going to like this young fella. Well, is there anything else wrong? Well, he is a vicar's son, Dad, so don't talk about dogs. No, I'll talk about Moses in the bulrushes. Now, Jim, I've seen this Leslie Gowland, and, well, he's just a young fella, same as all the others. Of course he is. He's going to be a doctor, but he says diamond blast, and he likes a drink just like Peter. Oh, he does, does he? Queer vicar's son, I'm thinking. Damn blast as a pint. And what does his father say? Oh, come on, Dad. Oh, jeez. Ah, oh, well. Where's my collar and tie? Now you are being good. Oh, dear me, I wouldn't wear one of these things for a pound a day. You know, the chap that invented these should have been strangled at birth. Come on, I'm Jim. I'm doing my best, aren't I? You know, she'd have been far, far better off to have had Peter. If she's going to start moving in higher circles, well, I can see who's going to take the punishment. Push that up there. He's coming. Oh, dear me. Where do I sit, Maggie? Here. And you better be reading that. What, Church Times? This is ridiculous. I've never read this in my life before. Well, it's time you started. Honestly. Can I bring him in now? I right, go on, wheel him in. <laughs> Mother, Leslie Gowland. <laughs> How do you do? Hello, Mrs. Gay. How are you? Uh, I'm glad Sally was able to bring you home, Mr. Gowland. And that's Dad. Well, I'm very pleased to meet you, young fellow. Pleased to meet you, too, sir. You know, I don't think I know you. I don't think I've even seen you before. Oh, I know you all right. At least I've seen you once or twice at the Golden Lion. I think I heard you singing Annie Laurie there the other Sunday night. Yes, maybe so. Or possibly, possibly. Uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Gowland? Oh, thank you very much. I'm not taking your seat, am I, Mrs. Gay? Oh, bless you, no. <laughs> Dad, I didn't know you were a singer. Well, they say it's a wise child that knows its own father. Jim. Sally and I want to get engaged. And I came up here tonight to see you and Mr. Gay about it. Well, we... Oh, I know you don't know me personally, but... Well, you can find out about me before you agree. Don't you worry, young man. I shall make a few inquiries. We know a nice young fellow when we see one. I'm afraid we can't get married just yet because I'm still at medical school. Are you going to be a real doctor or will you be on the scheme? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get there first. But I thought I'd ask your permission before I bought the ring. Well, Leslie, naturally, I want to get rid of my daughter. Oh, come, Mr. Gay. I can't have that. Oh, but you'll have to have it. Because, you see, girls have got to marry somebody. Because if they don't, there's no living with them. But the question is, who? Now, Leslie, you know, there is some opposition. You mean Peter? That's the very fellow. Surely that's up to Sally. Well, not altogether it isn't, you know, because... Well, Peter's a hard nut to crack. He's going to take some getting rid of. I've told him I've finished with him, and, and that's the end of it. Not with Peter, it isn't. You see, Leslie, the miner's a funny fella. Now, if he takes anything up, he sticks to it. Uh. Now then, how can I tell you? Well, if he's a pigeon fancier in his youth, do you know he'll be on with pigeons when he's 80? Aye. <laughs> and if he's a dogman in his youth, he'll be a dogman till the day he dies. Not that I have any time for them fellas. Well, now then, you see, if he fancies a girl, 
And what then? Well, if he does and he gets her, she'll always be a singing bird to him. Aye. <laughs> she'll always be as young and as bonny as the day he first met her. Now, if he fancies her and he doesn't get her, he won't have anybody else. Now, you couldn't care less about that, and neither could Sally. But he can be a big nuisance to you all the same, you know. The point is, do you agree to our getting engaged? Well, our Sally's happiness is all that I'm concerned with. You see, Leslie, it's a sort of a background I've been trying to give you. And I know that you're used to better than me, but I'll tell you this. Of a chest of drawers upstairs I wouldn't take 60 pound for. And the day that you get her, you'll get that as well. Oh, Dad! <laughs> well, now then, I think this calls for a bit of a celebration. Get some of your mother's elderberry wine out. Well, now then, Leslie, congratulations. Thank you. When you get our Sally, you'll be getting a fine lash, you know. But there's only one thing to watch for. Oh, what's that? Don't pay too much for the rain. Jim! <laughs> well, Why now, not? Well, you see what happened to Peter? Two years she had him in tow, and then she found out she didn't like the look of his face. So take notice. <laughs> I'll take the risk. <laughs> All right. Well, now, the best of luck. And you'll need it. Jim! Good night, Mrs. Johnson. Good night, Miss Gallant. Thank you, Peter. It's awfully kind of you to help out. Think nothing of it. Can I take you home? Well, I... There's something I want to ask you. Then in that case, of course you may. Thanks. Good night, Miss Gowland. Good night, Miss Hatches. Oh, good night, Miss Gowland. But, Peter, you said you were going to ask me something. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, what's that? You, you don't think it's pride of Erin? Or oh, she, she, she might be in pain or, or pining for something. Don't you think we ought to have a look at her? <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello. Oh, she looks fine. Yes, she just heard us coming, that's all. <laughs> Peter? Yes? What was it you were going to say to me? Oh, well, it was a sort of... Question I, I wanted to ask you, like. Yes. Well, well I, I, I don't quite know how to put it. There's no need to be shy. I, I know that, but I, I still am a bit. And it's not the sort of question I'm in the habit of asking. I should hope not. But I think I understand. Oh, do you really? Yes. But say it anyway. Well, Peggy. It's about the dog. The dog? Yes, well, you must have noticed that I'm interested in her. I I'm a greyhound fan. And I've been looking at her, and I think she's a good dog. A thoroughbred. And, well, I was just wondering... Can you tell me her pedigree? Pete. I can't remember it. It's pinned up in the shed somewhere. Better go and have a look at it. Oh, thanks. you ever come into bed? Shan't be long, love. You go on up. I've been up and I've come down again. What are you waiting for? I'm expecting somebody. Who? Peter. Well, it not come up now. Well, he said he'd come. Well, if he comes up now, he can go back again. Come on. I'm going to put the lights out. Oh, dear me. There's no rest for the wicked. What do you think you're doing? Oh. Oh. 
Nothing? Throwing stones at windows at your age. You ought to know better. I, I, I was just trying to wake someone up. Well, you wake the old neighborhood if you're going like that. Now, come along, get along with you. Oh, but... I said get along with you. But I... the matter? Well, it's raving beauty. She's barking. I'll have to go and see to her. Oh, that blessed dog. Peter, where have you been? I've got it. About Pride of Erin. And about time, too. Better come inside. If Maggie sees you, I'll never hear the end of this. in Ireland. I've got the times here. Pride of Erin, 29.9 seconds and 29.8 seconds. Here, let me look. Well, Raven Beauty, there go your chances of winning at Rodney Park tomorrow. You've had it. Jim, are you coming to bed or aren't you? Hide. All right, love. Coming. Is she all right? Yes. It was only a touch of wind. Wind? Well, dogs have wind, same as human beings, you know. Are you sure you wouldn't like to bring her up to bed with you? Oh, no. She'll be more comfortable down here. Oh, come on. All right, love, I'm coming. You know you haven't locked her in properly. Do you want someone to come in and pinch her? Hotel Metropole. Did you sleep all right? Like a log. I didn't sleep a wink. Oh, what's my landlady going to say when she finds I've been out all night? Well, you tell her you've been out all night with a raving beauty. That should satisfy her. Oh, I'm never going to hear the last of this. Dear me, dear me, some people are never happy. Never happy? Jim! Think on, you've only just arrived. Well, what's he doing there? Well, he just came to see how raving beauty was going on there. Uh, couldn't we give him some breakfast? Well, whatever. Next, doesn't your landlady give you any? Ah, yeah, but, but she can't make porridge like you do, Mrs. Gay. Oh, well, all right. Come on in. Oh, Peter, what are you doing here? Oh, hello. He just came to see how the dog was going on. How is she? She's all right, but there's another dog, Pride of Erin, who... I'll get you breakfast. Oh, no, thanks, Mama. I'm late. But it's Saturday. I know, but I'm meeting Leslie. We're driving into town. Oh, Sally, I want... It's no use, Peter. Well, yeah, come here, Sally. There's something you can do for me. What's that? Well, on your way into town, mm -hmm. call up Bill, Minnie and Bert's. Tell them that I've sent you a special. 
and tell them that raving beauty is as fit as a fiddle and that she's all out trying to win. All right. But don't forget now. Here, Peter, there's only for you to go. You wait a minute. Now, afterwards, you go out and tell Mrs. James and the milkman the same thing. They'll do the rest. Right, Jim. I don't understand you, Jim. Why? Why? Well, I'll tell you. Because we are backing pride of air in. What's your name? And I'm Tim Bob of Raven Beauty. Raven Beauty? Uh, she'll not win. Eh? She'll not win. She'll be looking if she gets around the track at all, I'll tell you. Oh, what's up with her? What's up with her? Didn't you see the last taking her round? No. If she'd let go of the lead, she'd have fallen down. Oh, well, she were in fine fettle yesterday. Oh, uh, yesterday. I think that's all very well, but her back leg's gone dead, you know. Is it? Uh, who told you? Who told me? I don't have to be told, Albert. I've got two eyes, haven't I? Yes. Yeah. What do you suggest? What do I suggest? I'll tell you. Pride of Erin. Grand dog is that, you know. She'll go around three times before her feet touch the ground. Pride of Erin? That's funny, you know. I'd, I would dicker in between that and Raven Beauty. It's, it's no good dickering, Albert. I'm giving you the winner, haven't I? Uh, it's a pity about her back leg going now. Who's back leg? Raven Beauty's. What's happened to it? It's gone dead. Has it? Uh, well, it just bears out what I've been telling you, you know. They shouldn't run her in that condition. Yeah. Turn Bob, I'm pride of it. Pride. Pride. Yeah. What? I don't fancy Raven Beauty, then. Raven Beauty? No. You know what they call in the kennels, don't you? No. Isle of Man. Why? Three legs. Now, go on, hurry up. Put your money on before it's too late. Yeah, I'm glad I met you. Thanks. Brian O'Neill in £140 a 20. Sort that out. Out of 40 smackers. And don't forget mistake. All right, all right, 160 pounds. Re That's better. Ten. Ten. Twenty. 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 <laughs> I've made a packet. I've won. Pride of Erin won. <laughs> oh, thanks. I am grateful to you. You know, if I hadn't met you, I'd have backed Raven Beauty. But now look. <laughs> So, didn't you back it? I never back my own hunches. You back raving beauty. Well, they're not much good to you now. What are you going to do with them? Well, as that chap Pee Wee on the radio says, what's it matter what you do as long as you tear them up? I'm 
What would you like? Five and four, please. Five and four. There's a pound note. Keep the change and buy yourself a coal mine. Thanks, Jim. Come on, Raven Beauty. We didn't buy the cab as well. All the best. You and me have got three black eyes between us. I don't think Jim will be very long. I believe he went to Rodney Park races this afternoon. He may have fallen into a bit of trouble. Trouble? Oh, nothing serious, I'm sure, but I believe there was some disturbance after the races. Is that you, Jim? No. The vicar's here. Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, do, Vicar. I am glad to see you. You'll have come up to talk about Sally and Leslie, I expect. Yes, I... Um... You know, your Leslie's a fine young fella. And I like Sally very much indeed. She's a credit to both of you. Well, well, it's nice to know you're unanimous, isn't it? But I also came to talk to you about something else. Oh, you did? Yes, my sexton's been telling me the most remarkable story. Oh, don't take any notice of him, Vicar. He's all right for digging graves, you know, but he's no good for anything else. It couldn't be possible that you got that black eye fighting over my dog. No, he couldn't. Oh, you'd better make a clean breast of it, Jim. Mr. Dowland knows all about it, and I'm glad he does. Well, I'm very sorry, Vicar. I'm very glad to hear you say so, and I trust you mean it. Oh, he does, Mr. Dowland. Yes, I'm going to start coming to church. I shall be up there first thing in the morning. Do, Mr. Gay, if you do that and keep it up, I may have some hope for you. Yes, it's no good living like a pagan, Jim. Well, one at a time, one at a time. No, I've said I'm sorry, and I've said I'm going to church. Well, well, what more can I say? Nothing, Mr. Gay, nothing. But there is one thing you can do. You see, even I understand that a seven-to-one winner must have made you a rich man today. Ah, oh, no, Vicar, no. The love of money, Mr. Gay, is the root of all evil. Now, here it is, coming up any minute now. Just wait. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to give you a sermon. You'll get that when you come to church. What I propose to do is to direct some of the money you won on my dog into more worthy channels. Ah, Mr. Gay, I've a happy thought. Well, you know what thought did? Jim! I'm not going to ask you to do anything I'm not prepared to do myself. You see, I also won at the Greyhounds today, Mr. Gay. You did? Yes. My sexton astonished me by bringing me ten pounds in prize money. This is how I intend to use it. To the Chinese and African missions, seven pounds ten. Church Bazaar, one pound. Church Building Fund, one pound. Choir Boys Outing, ten shillings. Poor do for the lads. Come on now, Jim, pale. Mr. Gowland's been very lenient. Put your hand down and try to look pleasant about it. No, they'll all be round me like flies round a jam pot. I'll be in debt when this job's over, I can see that. Well, there we are, Vicar. Twenty pounds. Thank you, Mr. Gay. And here's another ten. That's the fare for me ticket to heaven in advance. Splendid. This is my first venture into greyhound racing, Mr. Gay, and it's going to be my last. I do hope you meant what you said about coming to church. Oh, he does, Mr. Gowland. You can take my word for it. And he's going to put his name down for confirmation as well. Hey, hey, I never said anything of the kind. That's the spirit, Mrs. Gale. Oh, yes, Mr. Gowland. He's going to be a Christian if it kills me. I think I'll be better off being a missionary. Hmm? <laughs> I'm only teasing. Well, goodbye, Mr. Gale. Goodbye, sir. Oh, uh, church tomorrow is at 11 and 6.30. Well, I might come to both to make up for a bit of lost time. Good afternoon, Vicar. Good afternoon, Mr. Gale. Look after yourself, won't you? I've fixed it. I'm blowing the organ tomorrow. How much did you win? Oh, never mind about that. Come on. I'm Fred Astaire, your Ginger Rogers. How much did you win? <laughs> Shan't tell you. Oh, don't be so daft. Do you reverse? Oh, don't be so daft. <laughs> How much did you win? All right, I'll show you. Look, I won that. Oh, Jim. And, uh, I won that. And this. <laughs> this is my first venture into Greyhound Racing. It's not going to be my last. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get rid of them. Peter! How do, Jim? What on earth happened to you? Are you going to do a bit of fox hunting? You couldn't buy me for 20 quid. I'm not bidding for you, lad, but uh, for heaven's sake, come inside before anybody sees you. What do you think of this, Jim? Oh, isn't it a smasher? I see you didn't forget the four little pearls on the top, eh? Oh. Hey, but you know, Peter, lad, 
You're too late for our Sally. Well, who says it's for Sally? Bobby Dazzler, Maggie, come and look at this. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it, Jim? Ah, well, that's something your mother never had, you know. Didn't you, Mother? Ah, oh, well, if she's as happy as we've been, she'll not go so far wrong. <laughs> well, congratulations. You beat me, Leslie, but you beat me honest. Thanks, Peter. That was sweet of you, Peter. Come on, we must go. We're going to see the vicar about the bands. Oh, in that case, you'll need a best man. I'll do that and all. I'll hold you to that. I think I'd better be going too, Jim. No, stay behind with me and have a cup of tea and I'll challenge you to a game of dominoes, fives and threes. No, uh, I'll go down to the club and do a bit of celebrating. Are you coming, Jim? No, he isn't. No, I'm not. <laughs> well, I'll be singing, Jim. Aye, all right. And keep smiling. You never know what's round the corner. <sighs> well, thank heaven I've got some peace and quietness at last. Jim, Peter's walking down the street with the vicar's daughter. Oh, dear. If we go on like this, we shall all be related. It's the band of hope. I want a word with you, Jim Gay. It was a dirty trick to play on your relations. And on your mates. I'd have given you another like that if I could have got near you. Well, now then. How much do you want to borrow? Well, five pound it put us over, Jim. Six minutes. Shut up. What about you, Bert? Uh, everything's gone, Jim. I even sold six of my ends. I've got to turn four pound in or I don't go home. The missus have bashed me. Well, Spud, you gave me this, but I bear you no ill feeling, so come on. How much? Give me a couple of quid, Jim, for the lover, Mike. The rents and groceries can wait. I'll forgive her everything if you give me enough to get sozzled on. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you what you put on. What? Give? I give, mind you, give. Go on, take your hat off. <laughs> Maggie, now I've a pretty good idea how much they all put on, so I want the truth. Any lies and they'll get note. Now then, Minnie, come on. How much did you and Bill lose on raving? Twenty pounds, Jim. Mm, I think you're counting your expenses in on that, aren't you? Come on, Bert. Well, nine pounds, Jim. Uh, and six hens. Six pounds. Fifteen pounds, Jim. Oh, well, don't gamble so heavy, lad, in future. Oh, thank come you, Come on, Jim. Spud. Eighteen knicker, Jim. If I could have sold me television set, it would have been eighteen. <laughs> oh, thanks, <laughs> Jim. There we are. I don't know how to express my thanks. You've saved a home from being broken up and maybe a divorce, and these three kids will still have a father because of you. Jim, my heart's full. Oh, come on. All I can say is if you want any eggs, any time, any time, just send up to Bert Gay. Right, <laughs> Jim, you're a gay. You are, lad. You're a true blood gay. So we're the best of friends at last, then, Bill. Of course we are, Jim. Well, you know what they say, the best of friends must part, so clear off. <laughs> <laughs> good night, Bill. 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 Ah, well, now that's that. Maggie, I've been thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you and me buy a second-hand motor car? A car, Jim? Well, why not? We can afford it now. I will have a nice little holiday by the sea. Well, we've got our Sally off our hands, so you and me will make it a second honeymoon. Oh, Jim. <laughs> Well, she'd be lonely sitting in the back by herself. Oh, 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 o